Hello. Today we are reading chapter 21 of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's called Goodbye Violet. Chapter 21. Goodbye Violet. This gum, Mr. Wonka went on, went on, is my latest, my greatest, my most fascinating invention. It's a chewing gum meal. It's that tiny little strip of gum lying there is a whole three course dinner all by itself. What sort of nonsense is this? said one of the fathers. My dear sir, cried Mr. Wonka, when I start selling this gum in the shops, it will change everything. It will be the end of all kitchens and all cooking. There will be no more shopping to do, no more buying a meat, no more buying of meat and groceries. There'll be no knives and forks at mealtimes, no plates, no washing up, no rubbish, no mess. Just a little strip of Wonka's magic chewing gum, and that's all you will need at breakfast, lunch, and supper. This piece of gum I've just made happens to be tomato soup, roast beef, and blueberry pie. But you can have almost anything you want. What do you mean it's tomato soup, roast beef, and blueberry pie, said Violet Beauregard. If you were to start chewing it, said Mr. Wonka, then that is exactly what you will get on the menu. It's absolutely amazing. You can actually feel the food going down your throat and into your tummy. And you can taste it perfectly. And it fills you up. It satisfies you. It's terrific. It's utterly impossible, said Veruca Salt. Just so long as it's gum, shouted Violet Beauregard, just so long as it's a piece of gum and I can chew it, then that's for me. And quickly she took her, her own world record piece of chewing gum out of her mouth and stuck it behind her left ear. Come on, Mr. Wonka, she said. Hand over this magic gum of yours and we'll see if the thing works. Now, Violet, said Mrs. Beauregard, her mother. Don't do anything silly, Violet. I want the gum, Violet said obstinately. What's so silly? I would rather you didn't take it, Mr. Wonka told her gently. You see, I haven't got it quite right yet. There are still one or two things. Oh, to blazes with that, said Violet. And suddenly, before Mr. Wonka could stop her, she shot out a fat hand and grabbed the stick of gum out of the little drawer and popped it into her mouth. At once, her, her huge, uh, well-trained jaws started chewing away, start, started chewing away on it like a pair of tongue, uh, of tongues. Don't, said Mr. Wonka. Fabulous, shouted Violet. It's tomato soup. It's hot and creamy and delicious. I can feel it running down my throat. Stop, said Mr. Wonka. The gum isn't ready yet. It's not right. Of course it's right, said Violet. It's working beautifully. Oh my, what lovely soup this is. Spit it out, said Mr. Wonka. Wonka. It's changing, shouted Violet, chewing and grinning both at the same time. The second course is coming up. It's roast beef. It's tender and juicy. Oh boy, what a flavor. The baked potato is marvelous too. It's got a crispy skin and it's all filled with butter inside. But how interesting, Violet, said Mrs. Beauregard. You're a clever girl. Keep chewing, baby, said Mr. Beauregard. Keep right on chewing. This is a great day for the Beauregards. Our little girl is the first person in the world to have a chewing gum meal. Everybody was watching Violet Beauregard as she stood there chewing this extraordinary gum. Little Charlie Bucket was staring at her absolutely spellbound, watching her huge rubbery lips as they pressed and unpressed with the chewing, and Grandpa Joe stood beside him gaping at the girl. Mr. Wonka was Mr. Wonka was wringing his hands and saying, No, 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 no. It isn't ready for eating. It isn't right. You mustn't do it. Blueberry pie and cream, shouted Violet. Here it comes. Oh my, it's perfect. It's beautiful. It's, it's exactly as though I'm swallowing it. It's as though I'm chewing and swallowing great big spoonfuls of the most marvelous blue blueberry pie in the world. Good heavens, girl, shrieked Mrs. Beauregard, suddenly staring at Violet. What's happening to your nose? Oh, be quiet, mother, and let me finish, said Violet. It's turning blue, screamed Mrs. Beauregard. Your nose is turning blue as a blueberry. 
Your mother is right, shouted Mr. Beauregard. Your whole nose has gone purple. What do you mean, said Violet, still chewing away. Your cheeks, screamed Mrs. Beauregard. They're turning blue as well. So is your chin. Your whole face is turning blue. Spit that gum out at once, ordered Mr. Beauregard. Mercy, save us, yelled Mrs. Beauregard. The girl's going blue and purple all over. Even her hair is changing color. Violet, you're turning violet, Violet. What is happening to you? I told you I hadn't got, I, I hadn't got it quite right yet, sighed Mr. Wonka, shaking his head sadly. I'll say you haven't, cried Mrs. Beauregard. Just look at the girl right now. Everybody was staring at Violet. And what a terrible, peculiar sight she was. Her face and hands and legs and neck, in fact, the skin all over her body, as well as her great big mop of curly hair, had turned a brilliant purplish blue, the color of blueberry juice. It always goes wrong when we come to the dessert, sighed Mr. Wonka. It's the blueberry pie that does it. But I'll get it right one day. You wait and see. Violet, screamed Mrs. Beauregard, you are swelling up. I feel sick, Violet said. You are swelling up, screamed Mrs. Beauregard again. I feel most peculiar, gasped Violet. I'm not surprised, said Mr. Beauregard. Great heavens, girl, screeched Mrs. Beauregard. You are blowing up like a balloon. Like a blueberry, said Mr. Wonka. Call a doctor, shouted Mr. Beauregard. Prick her with a pin, said one of the other fathers. Save her, cried Mrs. Beauregard, wringing her hands. But there was no saving her now. Her body was swelling up and changing shape at, at such a rate that within a minute it had turned into nothing less than an enormous round blue ball, a gigantic blueberry, in fact. And all that remained of Violet Beauregard herself was a tiny pair of legs and a tiny pair of arms sticking out of the great round fruit and little head on top. It always happens like that, sighed Mr. Wonka. I've tried it 20 times in the, ta in, in the testing room on 20 Oompa Loompas, and every one of them finished up as a blueberry. It's most annoying. I, I just can't understand it. But I don't want a blueberry for a daughter, yelled Mrs. Beauregard. Put her back to what she was this instant. Mr. Wonka clicked his fingers, and then 10 Oompa Loompas appeared immediately at his side. At his side. Roll Miss Beauregard into the boat, he said to them, and take her along to the juicing room at once. The juicing room, cried Mrs. Beauregard. What are they going to do to her there? Squeeze her, said Mr. Wonka. We've got to squeeze the juice out of her immediately. After that, we'll, we'll just have to see how she comes out. But don't worry, now, my dear Mrs. Beauregard. We'll get her repaired uh, if it's the last thing we do. I'm sorry about it all. I really am. Already the 10 Oompa Loompas were rolling the enormous blueberry across the floor of the inventing room towards the door that led to the chocolate river where the boat was waiting. Mr. and Mrs. Beauregard hurried after them. The rest of the party, including little Charlie Bucket and Grandpa Joe, stood absolutely still and watched them go. All right, so this is the end of chapter 21, and you will have three questions uh, in a separate video. Good luck, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.